The $15 minimum wage is dead. Well, kind of. Despite the fact that the Senate parliamentarian denied Democrats from including it in this next stimulus package, some Democrats in the Senate continue to fight for it, including Bernie Sanders, and this could potentially delay the negotiations on this stimulus package and even completely change the way this next stimulus package affects those who are on Social Security benefits or people who will eventually be on benefits as well. Let's discuss the details in this video, but before we do, don't forget to like this video and subscribe subscribe. I'd also like to thank my sponsor Weeble. They've partnered with me to provide free stocks for my viewers valued up to $1,800. It's completely free and takes two minutes. All you need to do is open an account using my link. The link is in the description of this video just below the like button. Feel free to sell the stocks immediately to use the money if you'd like. Just make sure to fully open an account and then click on the green button that says get free stocks. Okay, the House of Representatives is set to vote on the stimulus package tonight, and by the time you're watching this video, they most likely already approved that package. Of course, it includes stimulus checks, the unemployment boost, money for state and local governments, money for the vaccine, and more money for rental assistance, as well as that child tax credit. However, the Senate parliamentarian said, nope, they cannot include that $15 minimum wage. Now, let me know in the comments, guys, do you like that $15 minimum wage? Personally, I really like it, and I've talked about it on this channel that not only will it directly help thrust millions of Americans out of poverty, but it will also indirectly help a lot of people on Social Security benefits as well. I've talked about that in detail in my last few videos, but basically, as the average wage of Americans in the country goes up, eventually that ends up raising the average wage for those on Social Security benefits as well. Not to mention that a lot of retirees still work part-time and a lot of them make minimum wage so this could directly impact those who are retired as well or those who are about to retire if that kind of makes a lot of sense a $15 minimum wage would also indirectly help increase social security benefits as well because there is a strong belief that if you increase minimum wage there will be a lot of pressure on our government to also increase social security benefits and it all comes down to a poverty wage if they're increasing minimum wage because they're saying it is not enough to live off of you have to then raise social security benefits as well because the average person on social security benefits makes $16,000 per year, which equals just over minimum wage. So there would be a lot of pressure to increase social security benefits as well if this minimum wage passes. And regarding that $200 per month stimulus boost, we still have no updates, guys, but I will keep you posted on that $200 per month stimulus boost for those on Social Security benefits. We hope to get updates on that. I don't think Biden has given up on that. I do still think that's going to happen. It's just kind of been put on the back burner, but we hope to have it on Biden's next package, which is going to be that infrastructure package. Basically, this $15 minimum wage was going to be a really good boost for those who are on Social Security benefits or who those who will eventually be on benefits. However, of course, the Senate parliamentarian said that Democrats could not include it in this package. Now, Pelosi has said that despite that, she is still going to approve this package in the House, including that $15 minimum wage, solely as a signal to their constituents that they will continue to fight for this $15 minimum wage. However, that being said, it's going to have to be removed in the Senate. They're going to amend the stimulus package in the Senate. Once it's amended, they will approve it in the Senate. It will then have to be passed back to the House, and the House will have to approve the stimulus package with those amendments. Then it will go to Joe Biden, where, of course, he will fully approve that stimulus package. However, some Senate Democrats are still fighting for that $15 minimum wage, and they're trying to do it in a kind of roundabout way. Now, even though the parliamentarian said that you cannot raise minimum wage through budget reconciliation because it is not directly impacting the budget, Bernie Sanders is saying, well, we cannot do that, although he disagrees with that in the first place, but he is saying, you know what? We can remove tax benefits from corporations if they don't pay their employees minimum wage, if that kind of makes sense. Basically penalizing corporations for not paying their employees a $15 minimum wage. So if a corporation currently gets a large tax break, but they want to pay their employees $10 per hour, that tax break will now be gone. 
basically hurting these large companies and incentivizing them to pay their employees a $15 minimum wage. This is something that has a lot of, of momentum already. And Chuck Schumer, leader in the Senate, has already said that he is considering bringing this to a vote as an amendment in the stimulus package. So you see on the one side, the good news is the $15 minimum wage is not completely dead. On the other side, we do not want this to slow down the stimulus package negotiations because, quite frankly, if they drop the $15 minimum wage, they approve the stimulus package quickly, we will get our stimulus checks and our stimulus boosts more quickly, right? That being said, this does not seem to be the case because Senate Democrats are going to try and find other ways to amend the stimulus package to help raise minimum wage indirectly. And they can do that because changing the tax code is allowed in budget reconciliation. You've seen Trump lower taxes for corporations using budget reconciliation. And that is the process that they're using now for this stimulus package, meaning that this is definitely a possibility. So again, it would be a really good thing for those who are making minimum wage, especially those who are retired or nearing retirements. However, it might slow down when that next stimulus package could be approved. So that's kind of a double-edged sword. But guys, let me know in the comments if you think it's worth fighting for. Do you think it is worth fighting for this $15 minimum wage, despite the fact that it might slow down stimulus? Or do you think Democrats at this point should let it go, approve stimulus as quickly as possible, and then work on this $15 minimum wage in a sequential bill down the road? Now, of course, top Democrat and Republican leaders had a lot to say about this $15 minimum wage. Democrats continue to fight for it. Nancy Pelosi said that the Senate parliamentarian's ruling is disappointing. Raising the minimum wage would give 27 million Americans a raise during this devastating economic crisis. House Democrats are determined to fight for 15. This policy will remain in the stimulus package. Of course, I just told you that a minute ago. Now, Bernie Sanders, one of the strongest advocates for an increase in minimum wage, was honestly really upset about this. And he had a lot to say. He said, I strongly disagree with the parliamentarian's ruling about the minimum wage, but the people are demanding an end to starvation wages in America. We will not give up. We must get this done. We have a video of Bernie Sanders reacting in real time. So let's see his reaction to the Senate parliamentarian denying this $15 minimum wage. Now, let me tell you about a setback that I just learned about an hour ago. As all of you know, all of us together have demanded an end to starvation wages in America. We know that a $7.25 federal minimum wage is insane. It is a starvation wage, and we've got to raise it to at least 15 bucks an hour over the next several years. Without boring you uh, about the incredibly uh, obtuse and undemocratic rules of the Senate, turns out that an unelected person who's called the parliamentarian of the Senate can determine whether the minimum wage provision was germane to the overall bill. And just an hour ago, or two hours ago, she ruled that it was not. It was not. And I strongly disagree with her. And we have the absurd situation. 60% of the American people in polls want to raise the minimum wage. House of Representatives has voted to raise the minimum wage to 15 bucks an hour. President of the United States wants a $15 an hour minimum wage. And I believe that in a large package, we can barely, but we could do it, get the Senate to approve that. And you've got an unelected parliamentarian using, because of the Senate rules that we have, saying that we cannot do it, denying 30 million Americans a pay raise. So we're going to deal with this. We're not gonna, I don't want anybody out there to think that we're giving up. We got a number of ideas about how we're going to come back. Okay, so it's clear. Bernie's not giving up on the minimum wage, and he's slamming the Senate parliamentarian, saying that this individual has not even been elected by the American people, but they can make this huge decision as to whether or not minimum wage can be increased. Technically, raising minimum wage would indirectly increase the budget because it would increase Social Security benefits and increase unemployment benefits as well. However, the way the rules are set up, it really needs to impact things directly, right? So we all knew from the beginning that this $15 minimum wage was going to be a hard pass. But Bernie will continue to fight for this. And honestly, 
I do think one way or another, we're going to get an increase in this minimum wage. And again, the reason I'm talking about it in this video is not only because it's going to help millions of Americans who are in poverty, but also because this negotiation might affect when the stimulus package gets approved. If they don't negotiate on this quickly, this stimulus package might be delayed. And Bernie actually wrote a letter as well. He said, in the coming days, I will be working with my colleagues in the Senate to move forward with an amendment to take tax deductions away from large, profitable corporations that do not pay workers at least $15 an hour and to provide small businesses with the incentives that they need to raise wages. That amendment must be included in this reconciliation bill and in this stimulus package. So guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. There's some really good comments here actually on Bernie Sanders' post. Someone said, well, if you raise minimum wage, what happens to workers who are already making $16 an hour or $17 an hour? People who have worked at this company for years and worked hard to deserve these raises, will they get a raise as well? Or will new hires just be hired on and make $1 less than, than people who have already paid their dues? Now guys, in a perfect world, everyone else would get a raise as well. Of course, then you get into a situation where you can't give everyone a raise because you have to be realistic. It gets complicated. But again, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Of course, Mitch McConnell. We haven't talked about McConnell much in a while now that he's the major the minority leader in the House, not the majority leader. He doesn't have as much power, but he still does have a lot of influence. And of course, he is calling this stimulus package a liberal wish list. He is saying that they were only using about 1% of this money on vaccines and only 5% to fund schools. Really, they started with a preconceived liberal wish list and are working backwards. Guys, let me know in the comments if you agree with McConnell. Whether you vote Democrat or Republican, I think we can agree. We all want stimulus. We just want to help the people who have been hurt throughout this crisis. And honestly cannot stand looking at this man's face. That's why I haven't talked about him in a while. But again, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Some people do not agree with everything in the stimulus package. And that's okay. I would love to hear your thoughts. Now, Joe Biden, he said, the week before I took office, only 6 million COVID-19 vaccines were administered in that week. This week, our administration will likely administer over 12 million shots. That's double the pace in just six weeks. Of course, Beating this pandemic and getting people immunized is one of the best ways you can stimulate the economy by creating more jobs and getting people back to work and just get back to where we were in the first place. However, Biden is taking a lot of credit for this. And again, you know, I give him credit. They did a good job rolling out this vaccine. That being said, of course, more people would be getting immunized no matter who was president, because when he took office, we were at the beginning of that distribution of the vaccine. But guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you made it this far into my video, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like this video and share it with anybody who you think might find it helpful. But that's where things stand today. The House, by the time you're watching this video, the House has most likely already voted on the package and approved it. Again, it will then go to the Senate. The Senate's going to negotiate this, make some amendments. It will then go back to the House and then go to Joe Biden for final approval. So we'll have to wait and see. Will this $15 minimum wage slow down stimulus negotiations? Will it make the next stimulus package take a bit longer? Or will the Senate compromise on this quickly to get this stimulus package done? And again, if the $15 minimum wage is eventually included, it's going to indirectly help those who are on social security benefits or those who are going to be on benefits in the future by increasing the average wage index and increasing social security benefits and unemployment indirectly. But guys, with that said, thank you so much for watching and thank you for supporting my work. Stay strong out there. Help is coming soon. We do expect this package to pass in the next two to four weeks. So the help truly is coming soon, despite the fact that it's been taking extremely too long. But guys, thanks again for watching and have a great day.